Hi, I'm Jim Steckman with World of Work TV. Sales compensation in the C-suite, or the subtitle of this uh, discussion, you want to pay them what? That's a very valid uh, challenge, I think, when you're dealing with sales compensation. The sales force is a very unique part of the organization. It's the only part of the organization that's customer facing at all times, and that uh, virtually every organization depends on uh, to a huge degree to make their revenue goals. And their compensation is very different as well, especially if you've got a very aggressive pay mix. If you've got a very aggressive pay mix uh, to the C-suite, they look at that and say, what? You want to pay them what? And yet the sales force is looking at that as potential income, all the way up to making the max uh, on their plan. So let me offer you a couple of ideas in terms of how you can justify sales compensation and, uh, and, and, and promote it and manage it the way it should be to your C-suite so that everybody embraces and endorses and you know, gets behind not just the sales force but the, the way in which you're motivating and incentivizing the sales force. Uh, to start with, think about and make sure that you've got and, and that the C-suite understands uh, a, a team uh, with the right people at the table and a governance process that makes sure that all the voices, all the appropriate voices are heard to make sure sure that you're really thinking about the go-to-market strategy and, and, and how, you, how you can best get the sales force engaged. The right people at the table, the right people on that team is critical because if that's the case, then you're obviously going to, as you talk to the C-suite about sales compensation, you're going to have representatives from the finance organization, you're going to have representatives from the sales organization, and certainly it's uh, advisable that you've got uh, representatives from the HR organization. If you've got that kind of coalition, if you will, that's uh, a part of the sales compensation design process, that's going to really help you uh, sell your plan to the C-suite. And making sure that you've got the right people at the table and that you've got a governance process that uh, where the roles are really clear and you've got a process for evaluating your plans and uh, implementing new plans and, uh, and understanding how well your plans are operating. Which brings me to my second point, which is make sure that you've got a process by which you can, uh, you can put in front of your C-suite an inventory of all of your incentive plans. Uh, and, and oftentimes this is divided, and I don't think it should be, but divided between sales incentive compensation versus uh, incentive compensation for the broader workforce. I think you really should take a look at all of your incentive plans as part of a, uh, a cohesive whole, if you will, the goal of which is to drive sales performance uh, for your organization. And you've likely got a variety of different uh, channels to market, you've got a variety of different uh, uh, sales roles and, uh, and sales teams, you've probably got a global organization. So make sure that you've got a very clear picture of the, the, uh, the inventory of your sales plans and a process to evaluate the health of your sales, each, each of those sales plans during the course of the year. Basically make sure you've got a process that you, that you can explain to your C-suite that uh, ensures that you'll be managing and you've got good both insight and foresight as to, as to how well the plans are doing. The third thing I think that uh, is, is advisable is to make sure that you've got agreed upon metrics for evaluating the ROI of the, of the sales compensation plan. Uh, for starters, do you have, uh, does, does the plan pay for excellence and exclusively pay for excellence? Are your highest performers, those people that are bringing back the most business to the organization, are those the ones that are your highest paid? And are they the highest paid because of what they've done this year? Or do you have some kind of a sales comp plan that allows people to kind of live off past performance, what we think of as an annuity plan as opposed to actually a pay for performance sales compensation plan? So that's, I think, a real important point to make sure that you can describe for your C-suite uh, uh, stakeholders exactly how the plan rewards for performance and, and how, in fact, it's proven out because your top performers are the ones that are really uh, getting the highest rewards. The second thing you should be able to talk to the C-suite about is your compensation cost of sales and do that by channel so that you can really understand the return on investments you're getting for uh, each of your plans and each of your channels to market. I think that's really critical and a compensation cost of sales goes along I think with linearity and uh, is your, if you've got some issues with linearity uh, in terms of sales revenue and sales performance, is that caused by the sales compensation plan perhaps? So be thinking about those metrics and ways to evaluate your, your sales compensation plan and make sure there's agreed upon framework that uh, will allow you and uh, the rest of the sales comp design uh, stakeholders and certainly the C-suite are all on board with the same set of metrics so that you're talking uh, you know, apples to apples and oranges to oranges as you, as you have these discussions. The final point that I would underscore is uh, the point around talent. I think that's where you 
coming from an HR perspective, a compensation perspective, should have a unique and important perspective to offer. And that's with regard to talent. How well is your sales compensation plan not just rewarding top performers, but what's your turnover? And what's your turnover uh, by segment, if you will, of the sales force? Are your top performers staying with the organization or do you have issues with uh, top perf performer turnover? You should expect to have a certain amount of turnover, but make sure it's the right turnover in the organization. And if you've got issues uh, where your sales compensation plan is not viewed as favorable by your, your key performers um, and they're not the ones that are receiving the highest uh, payouts, then you've got a serious issue, obviously. Other things to think about is your, your ability to hire new sales talent and your ability to ramp that talent up quickly and to make sure that uh, they can become uh, effective in producing parts of the organization. So I think those are the four things that I would uh, encourage you to think about as you promote your sales compensation plan uh, to the C-suite. You know, number one, you know, what's your governance process? What's your, what's your design team? Do you have the right people at the table? Number two, do you have good solid metrics uh, for evaluating the ROI uh, of your plan and, and is there a language, if you will, that's, uh, that, the, that all the C-suite is conversant about in terms of uh, evaluating sales compensation. Number three, do you have your arms around the total inventory of your sales compensation plans and do you have a process that everybody is comfortable with in terms of evaluating how well those plans are doing? And then finally and most importantly, and I think I really saved the most important uh, for last, is that idea of talent. Do you have ways to evaluate your sales compensation plan and correlate it, if you will, with your talent management uh, uh, processes in the organization? And can you demonstrate that sales compensation is a, is a, is a key tool for engaging, motivating, and retaining uh, the talents you need to drive success in your organization? For World at Work TV, I'm Jim Steckman.